Hi everybody! So if you're checking out this video, you're most likely considering doing some solo travel in the near future. Sometimes if you've never done solo travel, it can seem like a really terrifying experience or just completely undesirable, both of which are completely untrue. It's really, really fun, you get to do exactly what you want to do, and you get to become a stronger person, which is really awesome. But if you're still a little bit nervous, I have compiled a list of a couple tips that will help you with the planning process and the actual experience being on your own and doing solo travel for the first time. So let's get started. So what I would suggest, and this is what I did when I first did my, my own solo trip, was you have to get down to the bare bones of what you're actually afraid of. Is it that you're nervous about your safety? which is a completely legitimate thing to be nervous about, but is that what you're scared of? Is it that you're afraid you're going to be lonely? Are you afraid it's going to be boring? Whatever it is, you kind of have to figure that out. Whether you feel like it's actually stupid or not, you need to figure out what that is so that you can tackle that kind of first off. For my first solo trip, <laughs> the thing that I was most scared of, which looking back was really stupid, I was really nervous about getting around because before then I had either always had a family member who handled like the driving or you know tickets on trains or whatever or I was on tour and they of course just took care of all that stuff so the idea of like hailing a cab by myself or like dealing with a tuk-tuk or whatever that for some really weird reason that really made me nervous so I made that a priority to research that before I went and I booked a couple of my like cars to get from the airport to the hostel etc etc beforehand so I just didn't have to worry about that so first off figure out what you're scared of and then start researching how to get around that I can almost guarantee it's not worth being scared of. After you've done that and you've done some soul searching with the fears, comes the really fun part is you get to decide where to go. Sometimes this is a no-brainer because you already know exactly where you want to go, but since it's a solo trip, you get to choose. You don't have to consult anyone else. Where do you want to go? So it's really, really amazing because you don't have to get a whole bunch of different opinions. Next thing that you have to decide is whether you want to go completely independently or if you want to go with a tour. Obviously, going independently is a little bit more stressful, but it also allots a lot more freedom, which is awesome. But if you're really, really terrified of solo travel, you can go with a tour group and they'll handle basically everything. Do be aware though, because some, or not some, actually a lot of tour groups make you pay a single supplement, which really sucks, and especially for someone like me who does a lot of solo traveling, it feels kind of like they're discriminating against solo travelers, not gonna lie. But I understand the, the reasons because you have to get a whole new a whole room just to yourself so you basically have to pay for two people. There are some really good companies out there that have like roommate matching and they will like put two solo travelers in the same room if that's okay with you and then you don't have to pay a solo supplement. But Unfortunately, that's kind of a rare thing, and most companies just make you pay extra. So, it sucks, and that is what makes me not want to use touring groups that much. The next thing is literally the most fun. Since it's just you, you get to decide exactly what you want to do and where you want to stay. If you want to rough it and pay just a couple dollars, you can stay in a hostel. You don't have to worry about if your neighbor or your travel companion, you know, doesn't want to stay in a scary dingy hostel. Like, it's your trip, you can do what you want. How, or, on the other side, if you really want to pamper yourself, you can stay in a nice place and you don't have to worry about someone else complaining that the place is too expensive. And it's same with what you want to do on the tour, on your trip, you, you can choose. I mean, it's just completely up to you. If you want to lay on the beach every single day, all day, that's okay. Or if you never want to lay on the beach, if you're like me, who actually does not really know the beach, you know, I'd much rather be looking at temples and going on hikes, you know? I can do that. I don't have to worry about like, oh, my friend wants to spend, you know, three days on the beach. It doesn't sound fun to me. I can do whatever I want, which is really awesome. A lot of times, if you stay in a hostel or a hotel, they will set up day tours for you, which is really, really great. 
Um, so if you want to go see a temple or you want to go to a neighboring city or anything like that, they will actually set it up for you so you don't have to worry about that. And it'll handle transportation, a lot of times it handles food, all that kind of stuff. So you still get the kind of tour experience that I was talking about before, but you're still traveling independently and the stress level goes way down. My next tip is, I think, very important and hopefully you have someone that you can do this with, a family member or a close friend, but as a solo traveler, of course safety is a concern because you are most likely going to be by yourself on the other side of the globe, so you need to have someone that you can keep in touch with. It doesn't mean that you have to constantly be texting them or calling them or anything like that, but it's important that someone knows your general whereabouts and that you are still alive. <laughs> it's important. So I would suggest have you know a family member or a friend that you check in with periodically and it will just set everyone at ease and if something did happen they would know like okay this my friend was supposed to check in with me last night and they never did I'm starting to freak out. So it's very important to have that. And on that same line with safety, I know a lot of people, especially if you're female, you get really, really nervous about traveling solo because of safety. It all comes down to common sense, you guys. You know, if a situation feels weird, don't, don't pursue it. And um, just uh, the same safety procedures that you have back home, utilize them in this other country. You, you, typically when you hear about another country, you're only hearing about the bad things. So when people say like, oh my gosh, Vietnam is not safe, India is not safe. Yes, of course bad things happen there, but you're typically only hearing the bad things. And it probably flip-flops for your country as well. Those countries are probably only hearing about the bad things that happen in America or Canada or UK or wherever you're from. So just be aware that a lot of that not that it we can't happen, but you don't have to be paralyzed with fear of your safety. You know, just be smart, be safe, and you should be fine. My last tip is, some people might not really agree with this, but I say completely 100% keep a journal while you're traveling, because this is going to sound kind of sad, but you're the only one that's going to remember this trip. Because so when you are traveling with a companion, you'll always be able to bounce off memories with them and they'll be able to bring up things that maybe you have forgotten. But for this trip, it's only going to be you that are there having those experiences. So you have to take lots of pictures. You have to write down what happens every single day. I, every time I take a solo trip, I write down at the end of the day everything that happened. And even if it's kind of dumb things, you know, in three years I might look back and be like, oh. I remember when that happened, and it might not be dumb anymore. So I would completely suggest bringing a journal, or writing a blog, or just taking loads of photos, even selfies, it's okay, it's okay. And just document it, because not only do you want to share it with other people, but you're going to want to remember it yourself. So I hope these tips were helpful for you. If you have any questions, please comment down below. If you have any other awesome tips, you know, let me know. I've done some solo traveling, but nowhere near as, many, as much as a lot of you guys out there. So let me know if you have your own tips, and I hope that I will be seeing you guys soon, and good luck on your solo trips. You will have time of your life.